I want to go through the provisions of the bill quite carefully, sir, because I want to make it clear that we are not decriminalizing the possession of any cannabis. We are not saying that if you are in possession of cannabis that you, you are not committing a crime. But we are saying that if you are in possession of less than 14 grams of cannabis, that we will treat you differently. You see, sir, we still have to acknowledge that it is a crime. We still have to acknowledge that it is a crime. But we don't have to do with you what has been done over the years. Um, so, Mr. Speaker, let us look at how we are approaching it. A person who is found in possession of 14 grams or less if the police have re let's, let's rewind if the police have reason to believe that you have 14 grams or, of cannabis or less in your possession what we are doing is serving you with a notice and this notice, sir, offers you an opportunity of discharging any liability by allowing you to pay a fixed penalty. So, sir, the, the, the point is, you could have gone to court, go through a whole trial, pay a lawyer, all those kinds of things. But we're leapfrogging that process and we're saying, look, young man, young woman, you found the possession of, of 14, 13, 12 grams of cannabis. Come take this, go and pay $200. $200 fine. So it is still a crime. There is still a penalty. The penalty far outweighs the value of what it is that you had. Far outweighs it. But it allows you an opportunity to throw yourself on the system's mercy and say, mea culpa, I am guilty and you go and pay a fine. The original process, Mr. Speaker, would have taken sometimes years, because as a lawyer, I know you, long, long time you ain't do all those cases, but you have juniors who would be able to tell you this simple drug possession case, the man had two joints, and three years we still in court. Countless adjournments. And you go through this entire thing, going to court, Week after week after week after week after week, the police come, the magistrate come, there's some problem, the matter of adjourn, the case and get heard. Takes up a lot of time. And then at the end of it, they get fined five hundred dollars. No, sir, we're cutting out all that. And we're simply saying you are found in the possession of cannabis. Here is a ticket, pay two hundred dollars. So we will have achieved one of the early principles, one of the foundation principles of law. You have a crime and there's a penalty. And the penalty should fit the crime. And in our view, a $200 fine allows you to do that. But in the case, Mr. Speaker, of a person who is under the age of 18, different and very important considerations apply. You see, sir, it is known medically that marijuana usage in younger brains has a deleterious effect on that person's development. But so does a criminal record. So does a criminal record, sir. And the criminal record does not have the effect of steering that person away from drug use. The criminal record does not have the effect of showing that person another way. The criminal record shows only that the government is a wielder of a big stick and we are going to administer the stick to you. And hope, sir, hope 
that it has a positive effect on. You know, Mr. Speaker, when that case comes on three years from now, you get charged with a joint today. And a case comes on three years from now, at which time you get fined, where is the redemptive value in that? What is the, what is the positive reinforcing lesson to be learned? from a penalty that is imposed three years down the line, and, and in fact, for all of this time, you are in a straight jacket because you have a charge pending before the court. Can't get a job. No, <laughs> sir, you know, a government's obligation to its citizens is to provide them with every opportunity. Sir, there's a hotel that employs a lot of Barbadians. And a lady was asked for a certificate of character. But somehow, she was interviewed, impressed the people, and, and they hired her right away. And she breathed a sigh of relief because she had a cannabis charge. But you know, HR, sir, at some point in time, somebody from HR, member for St. Peter, is going to be reviewing the file two, three years later, and they're going to be saying, hey, uh, Patsy, we got to get this file. Let me put the file in order. Um, Patsy, um, we were reviewing your file. Good job, you know, we like it. We were reviewing your file, but we need the civil character. I don't know what happened, but it's not here. And then the phone calls start. They start calling everybody in this room. What do I do? How soon can I get an expungement? Mr. Marshall, it was just one marijuana weed out by the dump street. And on and on and on and on. This is not a Pearl and Fred story, by the way. <laughs> but, you know, this, this person, and, and I've seen it, this person, their job is on the line Everything about their performance says you are a valuable customer, sorry, a valuable employee. But there is a rule in HR which says unless you have a certificate of character, you do not have a chance. And then we got to try and rush through. And HR knows no, and they got to hide up, hide up, hide up, hide up. And sometimes, sometimes they give you two weeks to get it, and you can't get it, and the job gone through the drain. Somebody's brilliant career. I think I'll be a brilliant career as a CEO, be a brilliant career as a gardener, as a maintenance technician, as a plumber at a hotel. That person now is, is thrown out. No, that's not what our society should be doing. In my view, I don't want us to get points for coming in after the fact and, and trying to help that person. But it's after the fact. Our success as an administration should be measured with how we protect that person, which is a priori before the fact. So by giving an individual an opportunity in short order to pay a penalty, there is a, a quick correlation between offense committed and penalty. Offense committed and penalty. You feel it at the same time. 